Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Friday, February 15th, 2013. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. On YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012 and my backup channel is ddarko2013. All right, I'm going to cover the economy in this video. The first one I have is Bernanke says economy far from recovering full strength. And of course, he's going to say that uh, and keep interest rates artificially low uh, to stimulate uh, borrowing and basically lending uh, by them, by a private cartel of, of banks called the Federal Reserve. So, so see, he reiterated his commitment. See, he's committed to record easing. It's funny because he says with unemployment at almost 8%, we'll, we are still far from the fully healthy and vibrant conditions that we would like to see, 8%. Hmm. The U.S. Central Bank has faced criticism from some foreign officials. Well, criticism as if they're not doing a good job. Well, they shouldn't exist. How about that? Is the dollar dying while U.S. currency is in danger? I mentioned this before about uh, the idea or concept of Obama actually being in place to keep dollar hegemony. So I don't know if that's going to actually happen about the dollar, uh, you know, basically hitting the tanks. So the U.S. dollar is shrinking as a percentage of the world's currency supply, raising concerns that the greenback is about to see its long run as the world's premier domination come to an end. So when compared to its peers, the dollar has drifted to a 15-year low, according to the IMF. It says here that it's indicating that more countries are willing to use other currencies to do business. It still constitutes 62% of the $6 trillion in allocated foreign exchange holdings by the world's central banks, the Japanese yen, Swiss franc, and what the IMF classifies as other currencies, such as the Chinese yuan, yuan are gaining. It says, generally speaking, it is not believed by the vast majority that the American dollar will be overthrown, says its vice president of equity research uh, company, but it will be, and this defrocking may occur in as short a period as five to ten years. Now, I, I could believe that maybe in ten years after Obama's gone, you know, because what he's doing, you know, what he's doing now is just keeping it going. Um, so it says here, our price control is coming to Venezuela, where nymphomania for dollars is the next big thing. In typical crazy talk ways, Venezuela is pledging that its currency de devaluation will not increase inflation in the country. And the Financial Times reports that it has warned it will crack down on businesses that raise prices. And of course, this is what hot on the heels of Argentina's, uh, uh, basically, what does it say, ignoration? of inflation and recent price controls. Yeah, they actually have price controls, uh, freezing prices at grocery stores. It would appear Venezuela's next is the gray market dollars are changing hands for 22 uh, bolivars, massively lower than the official just devalued 6.3 bolivars per uh, U.S. dollar rate. The nymphomania for dollars is what Venezuela's finance minister called it. Um, he says here that they're unable uh, to find tenable U.S. dollars to use for imports. It's also spreading to Colombia. It fears goods being smuggled across the border, creating inflation there too. Then we have it's the interest, stupid, why bankers rule the world. It said in 2012 edition of Occupy Money released last week, the writer or author writes that a stunning 35 to 40 percent of everything we buy goes to interest. This interest goes to bankers, financiers, and bondholders who take a 35 to 40 percent cut of our GDP. That helps explain how wealth is systematically transferred, or siphoned off, as I like to say, from Main Street to Wall Street. The rich get progressively whip or richer at the expense of poor, uh, the poor, and uh, actually it's the middle class too, really. Uh, I think the middle class is there to, to keep the poor going and uh, you know cycle that, uh, that wealth out of the middle class. Uh, not just because of Wall Street greed, but because of the inexorable mathematics of our private banking system called, or known as fractional reserve banking. Well, they can you know, just loan out 110 times the amount that they actually hold in reserves. That's why it's such a farce that they're actually called the Federal Reserve System. I remember you just had that guy in, uh, what was it, Italy, that uh, had uh, basically self-immolated over the usury system in protest. U.S. stocks fall as Walmart tumbles amid economic data. S&P's 500 index fell, snapping three days of gains as Walmart stores tumbled and investors weighed economic data. Again, that's there's your uh, red herring or your red flag. Walmart starts to take hits and close stores, that's when you know uh, civil unrest is coming, uh, when people, Americans, can't uh, buy these uh, cheap crap goods from China. 
uh, basically to maintain their standard of living. 75,000 pound cap on cost of care will lose thousands of pensioners their homes. Chief architect of plans to limit the cost of long-term care has criticized ministers for setting the cap so high that thousands of pensioners will have to sell their homes. It's the warning that if a husband and wife both move into care, uh, they could have to pay 150,000 pounds before the state steps in, wiping out almost the entire value of an average house. It says here that uh, they aim to safeguard elderly people's houses by imposing a cap of about 35,000 pounds, after which the state will meet care cost. Inheritance stealth tax to fund care for the elderly. You have the government will fund plans to assist pensioners with care bills by imposing a 95,000 pound stealth tax on inheritance. The Treasury is set to freeze the amount that people can inherit free of tax instead of increasing it in line with inflation. The allowance will be frozen at two, or sorry, 325,000 pounds despite Osborne, the Chancellor, just eight weeks ago saying that he would increase the amount in two years. The rate will not go up until at least 2019, meaning that thousands of families will be uh, 95,000 pounds worse off than if the allowance had risen. They would see 5,000 more people paying inheritance tax and are expected to contribute about $1 billion over the next five years towards the cost of home care bills for the elderly. So here we go again. This is becoming a, uh, kind of a trend. I mean, it was already a trend, but it's escalating. French jobless man sets himself on fire in Paris. 49-year-old unemployed man set himself on fire in the France's capital, Paris, and yet another incident which uh, attests to the uh, yeah, gravity of the financial crisis or the wealth consolidation operation of 2008 in European countries. On Friday, the jobless man set himself on fire in front of his home, located uh, six kilometers from the capital, say after being ineligible for unemployment benefits. So on Wednesday, an unemployed French man succumbed to, succumbed to injuries he suffered after setting himself on fire. So uh, it says here, in August, another jobless man, age 51, also died of self-immolation in the capital. Then next up we have Greek youth unemployment tops 50%. So, but it goes on here and says it all must. However, the six out of 10, 15 to 24 year olds in Greece, 61.7% to be exact, would beg to differ uh, with everything being, you know, great and wonderful and everybody being optimistic uh, with that view of the world as their economy grinds to a halt and with Spain reaching new heights at 55% as well as the Eurozone over 24%. All the bureaucratic lip service in the world won't stop the revolt that is coming, we fear. So there you go. There's all the rates and a nice little chart. Then 19-year-old sets himself on fire at Rome Airport. So the series of tragic European self-immolations continues. It says this time from Rome Airport in front of hundreds of people where moments ago Sky News reports a 19-year-old man from the Ivory Coast due to deportation sets himself on fire says the man from the Ivory Coast doused himself in petrol and set himself on fire in front of dozens of travelers and workers at the airport. People were screaming because no one knew what had happened, and I think the first suggestion was that it might have been a terrorist attack. So there was a lot of shouting and uh, police running after someone. That's all I saw. Sadly, since this is hardly the last episode of people self-immolating out of desperation in Europe and elsewhere, perhaps it is about time the centralized government of the world finally banned lighter fluid and matches and lighters. Woman dies after waiting three hours for ambulance. After women stop breathing, the call level jumped to most urgent. So isn't that nice? 87-year-old Toronto woman died in December after waiting three hours with abdominal pain and an ambulance that was delayed due to limited resources. So the record also shows seven ambulances were dispatched to her location but then diverted to other calls. So it says here that it highlights a growing challenge for Toronto and the rest of Canada as an aging population puts more demand on emergency services, including ambulances. So that's how it is in this brave new world, man. You want to be young, you want to have a lot of money uh, so that you can survive it because it's harsh. We have 30 major U.S. you know because of course because a lot of these people are dumped in homes, right? They're there to basically die. <laughs> So 30 major, you know, because, you know, the, 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 the children are out um, working and running as fast as I can to keep up. So we have 30 major U.S. companies spent more on lobbying than taxes. 30 large American corporations spent more money on lobbying than they had paid in federal taxes from 2008 to 2010, according to report. The lone exception was FedEx, 
that paid a three-year tax rate of 1%, nowhere near the 35% called for by the federal tax code. Then we have Berlusconi saying bribes are necessary, they are not crimes. Bribes are a phenomenon that exists, and it's useless to deny the existence of these necessary situations. This comes on the heels of, uh, what is this, Finmeshia, I'm not going to try to pronounce that, CEO's Indian helicopter deal bribes and Monty Pashi's derivative debacle. They, I think it was actually with this Monty Pashi, they actually uh, found like a, a bunch of money stashed away in an account, like 40 million or something like that, even billions. And yet we also are, we are to trust these technocrats when they say the crisis is over and all is well. The recovery is here. Vatican's new bank chief has military ship links, Vatican Bank, and new controversy as incoming chief tapped from shipbuilder making warships. So Vatican drawn into a new conspiracy Friday for announcing that its bank's new president is also chairman of a shipbuilder making warships, a significant conflict of, for an institution that has long shunned ties to military manufacturing. Then you have a trail of breadcrumbs, the resignation of Pope Benedict, and the great financial collapse. On a conspiracy side note, it was kind of interesting that I was talking about the black pope and the white pope. Maybe uh, uh, him rationing your, the white pope standing down kind of prematurely is maybe has something to do with the black pope. And then I was talking about how the new pope is actually going to be an, uh, a non-European uh, or Anglo pope. And uh, the, I keep seeing this picture coming up of this cardinal Turks and whatever. So maybe the next white pope will be a black pope. <laughs> Which then again could fulfill the Nostradamus, or uh, not Nostradamus uh, uh, theory, but uh, Malachi, the Book of Malachi, or something like that conspiracy, which is saying, or uh, prophecy saying that basically it would be the olive pope, which would be uh, someone that was olive skinned. It says uh, here that Cardinal Peter Turkson, according to the Pope's own brother, Benedict is tormented by the Vatican. Vata leaks scandal involving leaked Vatican documents indicating money laundering and corruption. Cardinal Peter Turkson, who would probably be the next Pope, uh, surprised many by coming out with a proposal that damned the idolatry of the market and called for a supranational banking authority identical to the one recommended by the Palais Royal Group. The Pope has immunity in abuse trials, says the Vatican, so accused of are accused by victims, lawyers, of being ultimately responsible for an alleged cover-up of sexual abuse of children by priests cannot be called to testify at any trial because he has immunity as head of state, a top Vatican legal official said. One-fifth of Israel's budget spent on, for, uh, on military says here that expenses dwarf those of other industrialized nations. A new report on Israeli government expenditures show the nation spending a hugely disproportionate amount on their military, with roughly one-fifth of the overall national budget going straight into military spending. And guess who pays for a lot of that, guys? U.S. taxpayers paid more to Israeli defense budget than Israelis. This is from September 2012. This is what the Army Chief of Israel states in the past three years. U.S. taxpayers have contributed more to the Israeli defense budget than Israeli taxpayers, so feel proud. It says here, oil under $97 a barrel as Europe economy slumps. Disappointing European economic figures highlighted this. Next up, we have world faces resource war in the near future, says Russian military chief. So the chief warns that the world will witness wars for natural resources in the near future, saying that Moscow might consequently face an increased amount of military threats by 2030. So it was a struggle among world's leading powers for fuel and energy sources but but and markets. But look at this, like what they're doing in China and that, and uh, 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 basically trade routes through India and the Strait of Hormuz. But living space, that's interesting. Uh, word or description to use. Uh, U.S. General urges Pentagon to boost its African spy missions by 15-fold. U.S. General Rodriguez was quoted as saying, I believe additional intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities are necessary to protect American interests and assist our close allies and partners. This is one of the things we were talking about. One of the reasons for going in there in the Mali Net was not just the uh, uh, resources, but also what? To get dr uh, drone bases in there in Western Africa and in Africa. And get, they said they had a hard time getting spies and intelligence in there. Can Pentagon keep up the Asian pivot while scrambling into northern Africa? So they're talking about containing China, that's what it's about. AFRICOM are scrambling for ever more resources, complaining they only receive about 7% of what they really need to deploy across the continent properly. One would think that with the budget crunch, officials might take a, uh, huge new commitments with a bit of care, but that seems not to be the case.
It's like uh, we were saying, it's also displaced people too. So I'm going to leave off here and uh, we'll cont continue in part three with the War on Terror, Reign of Terror, Liberty, Sovereignty. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.